families. And the Bible declares that we should strive peace with all men. So we don't have the difficulties with men outside the body of Christ, a family outside the body of Christ. Because we got to understand what Christ has done, uh, what he has uh, said about his word. When he said, a prophet is not honored in his own country nor in his own town. Jesus had these things, even when with his own people. But they looked upon him as being Joseph and Mary's son. They didn't see the immaculate conception that was upon him and the mighty move that God was about to do in his life. And because of people being disobedient, this is the kind of thing the devil comes to fleece you on. We're going to read about that also, how the enemy comes in and drives us out of what God declared us to be. Can we go ahead over there and first uh, go past the that? Is it six over there, Phillips? Let's look at that six right there. They will maintain a facade of religion, but their conduct will deny its validity. Wow. You must keep clear of people like this. Now, notice what I'm saying. A facade. They have a form of godless, but they deny the power of God. In other words, what God is saying that we live in right now, that we get so much information and not enough revelation that we fall and we go into the house of God opposite of what the book of Jeremiah says over in the book of Jeremiah 1 and uh, 7. Uh, uh, and, uh, matter of fact, when you, when you think about Jeremiah 1 and 7, we're going to go to two places before we go ahead and go on in scripture and get some breakdown on this. I want to bring you to an area of, Bible, I want an area of the uh, study this morning, and I want to take you back with that one word she said, those two words she said about they'll be, they be, they be contentious, they be, they be like haughty minded. The Bible said a man should not think of himself as being more than the author thing. She declared in that word that they be full of words, and the word of God declares the creeds according to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. And that second chapter, if you go there, no, the first chapter, yeah, first Corinthians, yeah, first Corinthians, the second chapter, and you go down to that eleven verse. Paul said, "There come a time when men would even understand their own selves, for a man would only know the things of a man, but no man would know the things of the spirit." In other words, they replace the spirit of God with information rather than revelation. But this is the thing about it. They have come with a form of manifestation, but not believing the word of God and denying the power that of. And they believe that they're doing it rather than what God is doing. You got to hear me talking because the spirit is about to move in this. I want you to hear what I'm saying. That we live in a time now that we get a form of God in this. And there's a lot of emotions that we see that's running around. And God is demonstrating his power by saying, look, if, 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 it's, if it's of God, then it's going to be revealed to God. You know, what the Bible talks about spirits talk to spirits. Over in John 4, 24, we won't have to lean to what we feel is right because once the Holy Ghost is infilled and engulfed in us, we'll come to the revelation, the knowledge, and understand that we can't get we can't get manifestation if we don't get information in revelation. Deliverance is fine, but if not proven to the fact that God is showing the signs of what he's doing, then it really, really adds to not. Because what we have now is a bunch of words just being coming forth. And people can get very excited over how people can oratorically perform the dictionary. Say mighty words that sound good. Full of big bolstering words as the woman of God said. And I want you to hear this once again. And she said again over in the, the book of, uh, was it uh, Timothy? Second Timothy, by that sixth verse, when she began to speak about it. Listen to it very carefully. This is what we have right now that's going on in the body of Christ. Cool, Pastor? They will make maintain a facade of religion but their conduct will deny its validity you no. must you must keep clear of people like mm. this wow their conduct will be a facade they have a form of godliness in other words he's saying they draw close to me with their lips but their hearts are far from me they are put on performance and shows to make them feel from an educational point of view that they really understand what they're talking about see man is already wanted to supersede and be over man but the word of God says we got to come to a place now in the body of Christ that it's no longer you that do anything, but it's a growth that's in you. I mean, John makes that very clear in the book of John 14. He talks about believing not that I'm the father, father me. But if you don't believe me, believe me for the works that I do. The word of God declares when Paul came to Thessalonica and he began to talk to the Thessalonians, Paul said, I didn't come in volume of scripture or speech. I come with demonstration and power. Even though if you're a man or woman of God, and I'm telling you, listen to what I'm saying. You got to hear this. Even if you're a man or woman of God, you have lost all of your, you lost your home. You lost your, 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 your marriage. You have lost your, 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 your dignity about who you are. Your name has been spread throughout the world. And the people looking at you, if you ain't got what it takes. See, Apostle Paul was a stickler of the law. He's a proven fact that even when he went through the very trials that he went through in his life, God declared a decree that he took a murderer. 
Even though we know Pastor Paul didn't put his hands on anybody, but he gave a command that was coming from the high priest with those with those murderous jailers that he was rolling with. If you ever done a study about those jailers in Rome, them were some bad cats. Them guys were some hit men. But they came through the commandments what Paul told them to do. Paul really never laid his hand on anybody because Paul gave the command. He was just as much as responsible for the people who had been dragged up to the high priest and imprisoned about the things that went on. What are you saying, Pastor Ellis? This is a time that we're living in at this time now that the power of God will not fall in the revelation and demonstration. It, it'd be more or less denying the power and have a form of such that people will turn away. And the Bible declares according to the word of God, he said in the sixth verse of the King James verse, he said, well, they be short. And there are those who will creep into houses, make them captive of not just gullible women, loading them down with sins and leading them away with, with various lusts. Their man will be called away the same way. You know, they have a form of learning, not able to come to the knowledge. You know, their ears begin to come itching. Now, we're going to get over there. Now, I want you to see something here. Now, now as I move, I want to show you how we all uh, this word of God has all says that this how this is coming back. And I was talking to a man of God uh, just the other day, and I want to say, I don't want to say his name, but how the form of witchcraft control, like he says over there in the third verse, un unloving, uh, unforgiving, slanderous, self-control, brutal, despising good. This is a form of witchcraft that's in the body of Christ as of right now, as we speak of. Now, you can speak of it any way you want to, but I'm telling you, I'm speaking from the Spirit. You can get any kind of commentary you want. But I'm telling you, these words are controlling words. Whenever you fall into the area of disobedience, that's witchcraft. It leads you away from uh, what God wants you to be with the person he's put in place. Now, it's got so bad in the body of Christ. Now, the leadership is falling the same thing with the body of Christ. In other words, the, the, the leadership is compromising with the prisoners because of what they want the multitude or the money to still come into the house of God. And this is how they want them to be. So we're going to blend in with what they feel they want. We're going to appease and please them rather than tell them about what the word of God is and the truth of what has been told. So in other words, for us to keep the congregation and keep what we want, we got to meet mingle in with them and we got to have the shepherd's heart but we got a shepherd's heart but we mingle in things together Bible says you shouldn't mingle things in with the blood of Christ we mingle in things in to satisfy the people in such a way to make them feel good about what we're doing is pleasing to them rather than the leadership that's in place now listen to me when I'm talking about this I want you I want to catch this I want you to catch this now we go over to the book of the King James Version I want you to go over to the area of the book of Ephesians I'm gonna have my wife to stay right where she is because she's reading out of the, some of the different Bibles and we're gonna we get this thing and we're going to show you what we're talking about in terms of how we all uh, once fell away from the faith we all had a death sentence on our life but in the word of God he declares over in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 he made, he made a very strong statement here about some things that we need to look out for as we walk forward and being men and women of God. Now, 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 don't give me, don't, don't take this to a different way because this is what the word of God is saying. It says grace comes through faith. We understand that. Faith to believe that according to what we hear, he said faith is the evidence. He talks about this in the book of Hebrews. I can't see it, but I got to believe it. When we see things as out of line, according to what we read over in 2 Timothy 3, we will find out that our conduct will be totally out of order. And it will line up with the revelation that God has said is coming to pass. He said, in the last days, men will be carried away. There will be a great falling away. And this is the very thing that we have in the world today. With the, with the giant boom of technology and all the things that's coming in on the scene, men seem to be more after greed than after the God. In other words, it talks about in the days of Noah, when he began to warn them about it's going to rain, where they thought he was some kind of crazy old man out there in the middle of the desert slapping some wood and some tar together. But God began to bring forth that drop of rain. Man didn't understand because in those days, we read our Bibles correctly, the ground was irrigated. It wasn't rain. So they looked at it as being a knot. In other words, it's raining as of right now, but we don't see it. But it's raining a different type of rain. That now the spirit of the Antichrist is falling upon the world and like it never have fell before. We're dealing in a time now, ladies and gentlemen, where the government is going to be a big part of the rise of the Antichrist. You got to hear this word. You better hear what I'm saying. Because this is what Bible, this is what the word of God gets most of it at. He says over here in the book of Second uh, Corinthians, uh, Second Ephesians, um, the book of Ephesians chapter 2, and we were made alive who were dead not trespasses and sin. Now right there tells you that we all was born in the sin but we ain't a part of sin. That God has given us ability according to Jeremiah 1 and 5 to have the very gift that's in us to be off, to be, be elevated. 
that we walk in the area of circumspectly, to know that we are called to be Ephesians 2 and 10. Am I in there with anybody? If you wrote down Ephesians 2 and 10, you'll understand what I'm saying. Well, let's look at Ephesians 2 and 10 before we go back to Ephesians 1, and let's look at it in the commentary point of view uh, from the area of the Good News Translation. Now, this is what the Word of God says about us as being man, woman, and God. God has a union. God has union. God has made us a union. In other words, God has made us what he, God has made us what we are. And our union with Christ has been, been created, has, been, has, has created us for, the, for a life of God, for good deeds, excuse me, which has already prepared us for today. Now, now, now when I go back to the King James Version, I want you to hear this really again. I'm going to read this once again. Over in the Good News Translation, over here in the 10th verse. Listen to what he says right here. I'm going to take my time on this. Cause I know Pastor Ellis get to moving, and you'll miss these things because I move in the Spirit. I'm not saying I'm saying anything to, to, to pull you away, but I want you to hear. God has made us. He has made us, you and I, what we are. What were we made? we made with a gift, and that's according to Jeremiah 1 and 5. He made us what we are. We designed and engineered to be what? A union. A union, that union declares and decrees according to Psalm 133, <clears throat> excuse me, how good is it for men to dwell together in unity, in unity, unity, team bring forth effort. God has called us to come together to be one. The Bible declares and decrees over in 1 Corinthians, he tells us the opportunities that we have when we walk in the spirit, all the self same spirit. You can turn your Bible, you read 1 Corinthians, or in 1 Corinthians over there in that uh, that uh, 12th chapter in the 7th verse, he talks about the manifestation of the Spirit. And he talks about all these are by self-same Spirit, the Spirit of uh, the spirit of interpretation of, the Spirit of uh, healing, the Spirit of, 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 of moving forth, the Spirit of interpreting of tongues. All these things come together in the same soul Spirit. Now, 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 I want to get you to see this real clearly because I want to misquote. And I want you to mishear what the Holy Spirit has given me and how I'm coming across these things because now the Holy Spirit has given to me that what I need to bring on to you. Now, he says right here real clearly in the book of, of Corinthians, that's one, that's, that's the, we're going to stay with Ephesians 10, 2 and 10, but we're going to come back to the top of Ephesians 10, 2 and 10, and then we're going to go back over to the book of uh, 2 Timothy. This is the times we're living in that the Word of God said they are denied this is what I'm reading over here in 1 Corinthians 12. Listen to me. He says in 1 Corinthians 12, he says it like this, For the body is one. Now, well, let's start in the seventh verse. He said, But by the manifestation of the Spirit is given every man to profit with all. He's talking about prophecy to come together, to join in unified body, to be a union, as he says over in the book of Ephesians 2 and 10. He said, he said For it is given to the Spirit the word of wisdom. One is given the Spirit of the word of wisdom. Another, the spirit of knowledge. He's putting the team together. That we all one. We are one body. We're not separated. And what do we have right now? It's big eyes and big U's. The bigger my church, the more people I have, the more popular my name is, the more I'm on TV, the more better I say I am. Now the devil is a lie. No, God gave it to everyone to have everyone to have the opportunity to the right to the tree of life. That we all designed, as I heard Apostle Von Peake say over there in Arlington, that we all are ministers in the Word of God. We all to come together to do the work which God called us to do. But we got to believe according to what the manifestation is. God is manifesting and manufacturing us together to be one of creation. To come together as the whole body. He goes on and says in the ninth verse, to another is given faith by the same spirit, another the healing by the same spirit. Now notice what he's saying. You got a healing ministry. You got a faith ministry. You got a, a ministry of, of, of wisdom like Mike Murdoch has. Mike Murdoch's not outside the body of Christ. T.D. Jake is not outside the body of Christ. Bill Wentz is not tried outside the body of Christ. Bishop Archbishop Duncan Williams is not outside the body of Christ. These men are within the body of Christ and revealing those things from an inside source. The declare and decree the things of the times will come to pass in the season which we're living in. Men are falling away so quickly. Because you know why? Because we go back to the book of Ephesians. We see the very things in the book of Ephesians. We have been separated. The Bible said we once was outside, but now we have been made alive. Who were dead in our trespasses and sin. We would once walk through the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air of the spirit, that worketh now in the sons of disobedience. Come on, somebody. This is the very thing we're reading over here in Second Timothy, uh, third, uh, Second Timothy 3. It's a nature of disobedience, slanderous, boisterous, proud, blasphemous. That's all in the area of disobedience. These are the things that's happening in the body of Christ today. But we keep on moving forward and keep walking in tradition and man-made religion. We're going about we're going the body of Christ. 
every day, every Sunday, maybe three days a week or four days a week, we keep on trying to compete and do things in what another body of Christ is doing. We're more or less trying to get buildings and establish ourselves to be a part of what God said is not. He told them a prophetic word over there in the book of Mark 13. He said, see all these buildings? Every one of these stones going to fall. What happened? Around 17 to 67 AD, Titus, the Roman general, came in and tore all that stuff up. God is speaking perfectly in the season which we're in right now. It's okay. That, you know, to go into the building, but understand why the building is for the building is for you designed to bring people in and send them back out. What are we speaking about here this morning? We're talking about events and situations going on in the life that.